the United Methodist Church at Mount Tabor. You are so welcome and I'm, we are so happy that you are uh, with us worshiping today. Um, today is the fourth Sunday of Advent and this is the candle of peace. And um, we have some announcements for you today. This afternoon at 1 p.m. we're having the youth Bible study. So please come and bring a friend, Pastor Jeanette, our youth pastor will be uh, in charge of it. And uh, on December, uh, January the 7th, uh, we will uh, start our uh, disciple class at 7 p.m. via Zoom. So if you're interested in participating, we're going to have our orientation meeting that day. Uh, send us an email and send us or call me and let us know that you're interested. So we send you the link. And last but not least, in the announcements, uh, we are getting ready our Christmas service. It's going to be an awesome experience. We are going to share songs and we're going to share stories and we're going to share the love of Christ above all. So don't miss it. Um, it's going to be uh, on Facebook and on YouTube. So please join us to our uh, Christmas service on Christmas service Eve, in fact, on December 24th. We want to thank you for the food that you have been bringing for the uh, uh, food drive for the Interfaith Food Pantry. There's so much new food that uh, it's never too much food to collect. So we want to thank you, our, our youth and our youth pastor and the uh, Sunday school teacher and children and parents. Where yesterday at the um, uh, Daughter's Day in front of Dunkin' Donuts, uh, there was Santa, but I'm not going to spoil it for you, you're going to hear it later. So we were there um, collecting food and I want to thank them for their effort and for doing that. Okay, so now if you are at your home or wherever you are, let's be the peace of Christ. And anyone that you see besides you or you see on this, uh, in front of you or wherever you are, Say the peace of Christ be with you. Acknowledge them. Acknowledge their presence. And look at them and uh, with love in your eyes and tell them the peace of Christ is with you. Figure a way how to do it from the distance maybe, but let them know that you are passing the peace of Christ. And to every one of you watching, may the peace of Christ be with you today and always. Amen. Together our opening prayer. Oh, come to us, abide with us, O oh Lord Emmanuel, God with us. You came to us long ago as a helpless babe and one in need of human love and care. You taught us how to love and care for one another. Help us to hold on to childlike wonder, amazement, and love. And help us to love one another all year long. Guide our feet in the way of peace, as only the Prince of Peace can lead us by laying down our lives for one another and serving one another. In the name of Christ, Emmanuel, God with us, we pray. Amen. Please join me in the call to worship. Light the lamps. Prepare the room. God is coming to us. Make our hearts and spirits ready to receive God's most gracious gift, God's Son, Jesus Christ. Push the darkness away. The light is truly coming. May God's light shine on us, in us, and through us, that God's glory may be seen. Amen. Krista and her daughter Hunter will be lighting the fourth Advent candle. Thank you. 
We live on the brink every day. We stand on the threshold between this world and the next one. We live and move between the ordinary and divine, between the mundane and the mystery. Too often, we forget to look up and see the angels in our living room. We forget that we, the love we give and live in a sign of eternity. God with us right now, we forget the company is coming. Luke tells us that God's favor came to a girl, an ordinary girl. It might have been you or your daughter, it might have been the girl down the street or your grandchild, but the messenger of God came and greeted her and said, the Lord is with you. What a gift and promise, Emmanuel. God is with us. We light these candles with peace in our hearts for the promise of proximity the nearness of God, even when we forget to listen, to lean into the present. God is as close as our own breath. This, in a confused and confusing world, is a peace that passes all understanding. It is the peace that knows that company is coming. O come, O come, Emmanuel. scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word and the angel departed from her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, God, for your good news, for your word. May the meditation of our hearts and the words of my mouth be acceptable to you and be good news to all. Amen. Children, if you are at home watching us, come and join us. Tell, you know, parents, call your children and uh, we'll talk for a little while together. So today is the fourth Sunday in Advent. Christmas is almost here. In the middle of all this excitement, do you remember who we are getting ready for? I know that we've been telling, we need to get ready for, we need to get ready for something, company is coming. 
Who's that company? Who's coming? Well, I know that many of you might say, Santa, Santa is coming. And yes, Santa is coming for many of you. Santa may bring gifts, but you know who we are really waiting? So who, who we are really waiting is baby Jesus. Many of you will say, but wait, isn't Jesus already here with us? Well, yes, Jesus is here with us. But at this time of Advent, that's the time where we are still waiting to celebrate Jesus coming. What we are doing is remembering that day when Jesus was born on earth as a baby. And the scripture we read today says that an angel called Gabriel gave Mary the good news that she was going to have a baby. And the angel told her that the baby would be a holy one and would be called the Son of God. The angel also told her to name him Jesus. Do you know what the name Jesus means? Well, it means God helps us, God saves us, God rescues us. And every time we say Jesus' name, what we are saying is God help us, God save us, God comes to our rescue. That was the good news that the angel Gabriel was sharing with Mary. Have you ever had good news to share? Do you know what good news means? Well, have some ever told you something that made you very, 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 but very happy? And perhaps made you have a best smile forever? or clap your hands in excitement, or start jumping up and down with being very happy. Well, that's what good news do. Maybe you have heard news like you have received the best grace of ever. Maybe you have received the good news of a prize. You won a prize. Maybe you have you got the good news that you could see your grandparents after a while that you had not seen them. Or maybe you have received the good news that you were healed, that you are okay if you were sick, and now you can go back to your life like you had before. All those are good news. You know that recently we received the good news that the COVID vaccine is ready and that people are already getting it. Getting the vaccine will help us from getting sick with the COVID. And this is very, very good news. But yet, Jesus' birth was the best good news ever. Even better than the good news of the COVID vaccine. Even better than the good news of winning a prize or having good grades. And you know why? because Jesus' birth changed the world. Now we know through Jesus how God is and how far and immeasurable God's love is. Jesus was born to show God's forgiveness for the things we have done wrong and to show us the way to live in peace and with harmony with each other. Jesus told us that he will be here in our hearts, loving us, healing us, showing us how to be better people so there can be peace on earth. So when you feel sad or sick, talk to Jesus. Tell Jesus how you feel and ask Jesus to help you and Give him thanks. When you feel happy, talk to Jesus also and laugh with Jesus and give him thanks for all the good things you get. And you know what? You can be like an angel. Yes, you can. You can be like Angel Gabriel 
when you tell a friend and you tell someone about the good news of Jesus, you will be and sound like an angel, like the angel Gabriel, who gave the good news about Mary, to Mary about Jesus' birth. Would you pray with me? Jesus, thank you for helping me. Thank you for making me like the angel Gabriel when I give good news to others. The good news that you are our helper and that you will help them too. Amen. Well, my friends, the children's message is also our message today. It's also the message for all of us. What very good news can there be for us that knowing that Jesus is among us? That God loves us so much and that God loves so much the world that he gave us Jesus, Son, to forgive us, to save us, not only from our sins but also from our guilt and from our existential crisis of feeling unloved, of feeling worthless. Jesus shouts us to us in many ways. You matter to God. Your life has meaning. God isn't done with you yet. Yes. And Jesus suffers and dies on the cross. He is saying to you and me and the rest of your humanity, your life has value. Your sins are forgiven. You are loved. When Jesus resurrected, Christ shouted, I know you feel hopeless, but look, I have overcome, and you will overcome also. Christ is transforming our lives, drawing us to God's path and to God's ways, strengthening us and delivering us from our inner compulsion to sin. The more we think of God's love for the world, the more difficult it is for us to imagine the magnitude of the power of God's love. And this is what we celebrate in Christmas. It is almost Christmas, and Christmas brings excitement. It is that time of the year when we are forced to pause from our daily routines and think about others, perhaps more than what we usually do. We want to spend time with those we love and exchange gifts with friends, family, co-workers. And perhaps this time you have received more than ever requests from us asking for food donations. The need is big, it is huge. And whenever you bring your food donations, you become like the angel Gabriel, bearer of good news. Good news is what we need more than ever. We've had enough of bad news this year. It's the time to bring good news. It's the time to make changes in our lives. A world that is hurting needs to hear such good news. Good news that are not fake, but are real, real as our life is real. Good news of selfless love, good news of hope of a better world, good news of peace to all. Perhaps you have been touched by scenes this Christmas. Yesterday, I was touched watching Santa on a red truck full of snow at the dollar store mall asking for food donations for the Interfaith Food Pantry. Yes, Santa was there. Then I saw an elf and other helpers taking the donations to help Santa get the food for our pantry. Then I took a closer look and looked at them and realized that these were our people, this is our people, the regular people that we see in our pews on Sunday, the people that we meet every day in the street, our children, their parents, our Sunday school teacher, 
our Jews pastor. And this is what the power of love does. Doing the unimaginable. Convert real, regular people like you and me in agents of God's love, God's peace, God's grace, God's hope for a better world. This is the last Sunday of Advent. And we have lighted all the candles. We have a candle of love, a candle of joy, a candle of peace, and a candle of hope. Hope is what we need the most. Because when we have that hope, and we are bearers of the hope, bearers of the love, and bearers of joy, there will be peace on earth. May this Christmas inspire you to do the unimaginable, to be better of God's unimaginable love. May God's love fill you, heal you, and may this Christmas bring new meaning to your life, new hopes for you and for the world. May there be peace in the world. Please join me in singing our closing hymn, Star Child. God shines upon you. The peace of God 
is upon you. And the love of God is with you to share it with everyone that you meet. Make sure to be God's love, God's life, and God's peace wherever you go. Be blessed in the name of God the Creator, of Jesus the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Merry Christmas. Hope to see you on our Facebook watching our Christmas service very soon. God bless you.